Uh, so this is the Microsoft Community Office Hours, and we are live streaming on the Office 365 community out on Facebook, as well as, of course, this webinar series. Uh, our, our thought process here, so this is the first one, the first time, uh, is that we're going to do this twice a day on Mondays and try and hit North America kind of gets hit twice, of course, but uh, you know, early enough in the morning that we have uh, the EMEA folks at the end of their day, uh, and then we're going to do one late afternoon. My schedule just actually opened up. I can do it later. Um, Careful what today, you're saying. I know. Today, today, so we're doing one at 4 p.m. Pacific, but we might move that to um, 5 or 6 p.m. Pacific so that we can really hit Asia Pacific and get all those nations out there. So, uh, Whack APAC. Yeah. And so who shows up to help? It really depends if you're an expert and you're showing up as an attendee and you'd like to join us uh, in the expert discussion and share your video, please do. Uh, just just uh, ping me if you'd like to, uh, if you've got an answer for that. Of course, uh, if you're joining and you have questions and we're kind of monitoring in two places, or at least I am, um, if there are any questions. So just use the Q&A module in this. <laughs> Note, not an expert. Thank you. If you move that over to your left slightly, <laughs> hold that up again. <laughs> And then it'll point to me on my screen. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, look at the arrow. Uh, Let me get a screenshot of that. Yeah, wait, hold on. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so with that, you know, do we have any questions? And let me jump back over into the... <laughs> Can anybody actually speak? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if, if we don't have any questions, this is Riaz. I'm also a follow MVP on the Microsoft side. Hey, uh, I think, hey, hey, Sean, and hey, Christian. I think we should talk about how the remote workers are going to work nowadays, especially like almost like everybody's working from home, right? They should and be. There are some areas that everybody is actually having concerns about, oh, how do I do this? Or how do I manage my time? Literally in the last one week, a lot of my friends would never work from home. They reach out to me to like, hey, how do you manage this and that when you work from home? Because they know that I'm working from home for the last five or six years at minimum. That is a good topic and a very timely one. Yeah. I yeah, know uh, yeah. Christian's know got ideas. I do too. Well, you know, it's, it's funny because there have been so many uh, people talking, you know, sharing kind of best practices for using Teams while working from home and all this. And, and a couple of people have said, you know, like, there's so much of this and we don't need it all. And uh, it, we're just overlapping. I mean, the reality is that we all have different, you know, tips and tricks that'll work for different people. We all have different experiences. We work in different industries. And so it's... Uh, I, I never say like, don't go blog, don't go create videos about it. Like go, go and do that. Um, but uh, you know, I, we often don't have that chance to ask questions. And so it's great to have this. And I was, I don't, you know, Rias, maybe you, you want to share like two or three of your tips until we see some questions come through. Uh, anything you want to share and then Sean and I can kind of share a couple things. I think the very first thing that I, I would share with the community is like every day when I start my working, I still follow the same routine if I have to go to the office. Wake up early, you know, go check bathroom, you know, get some coffee and get your time, yourself a little bit of fresh air before you start working at 8, right? Uh, because some of the eight? friends, yeah, 8 a.m., I'm that kind of a guy, sorry. <laughs> Oops, I'm showing my two colors here. <laughs> so... I mean, literally some of my friends will reach out to me and even in the community as well when they were asking me like, oh, we know that, yeah, our office started at 8, so we literally wake up at 7.45 and start working. I'm like, no, that's not right. I mean, it might work for you for some time, but if you're looking at working from remote, like for a long period of time, the first thing that I always recommend is, guys, follow the same routine that you follow for your office. If you have to go to the office, right? You need to have your fitness as well. So literally people working from home in the last couple of weeks, I mean, again, it's because of that pandemic as well. They don't focus on their health. It's like, oh, I wake up at 7.45, 7.50, go straight to my laptop and start working. And then, you know, in between, I'm going in and out and doing, you know, all of the stuff that I need to do. 
when you are working, you are working, right? So you need to stay focused and you need to be active the same way that you used to be in the office as well. That's the very first one that I recommend to the team. Second, I mean, right now, because of the pandemic, literally it's my personal recommendation. Don't quote me anywhere, but I mean, this is what I believe. And that's what I'm communicating to my teammates as well. Your dogs, your kids on the background noise, all this stuff. Whatever we're doing, we're doing for them, right? So it's the time everybody's working from home. So don't feel embarrassed because of, oh, I have a background noise. My dog is barking or, you know, my kids are screaming around and stuff like that. It happens, right? So don't be panicking about that and don't be embarrassed for that as well. Just speak up. And the third and the most important one, I know I'm not following that right now because I also have some technology issues right now. Try to be on the video calls as much as you can. I'm the one right now who's not on the video, but yeah, video calls makes it more productive for the team. And it's actually going to be more engaging experience when you're actually on the meetings and the conferences with the customers and the, the business partners as well. That's true. Gives people uh, something to hold on to. Yeah, Sean, any tips that you want to share? Um, well, I think the ones that um, Rosia just shared were good. I mean, they're very good. I, I could do a lot better about taking care of myself personally. It tends to get lost. Um, once you start working from home for any substantial period of time, you'll find yourself slipping. I mean, we, <laughs> Dan Usher and I and a handful of other people joke about uh, no pants Monday. And, you know, you only have to look like business from the waist up. Um, you start to slide and everybody's, I think, probably seen the Dilbert comic where after like three days, Dilbert is just a hairy pajama mess, unshaven, unclean. Try not to become that guy. Um, every now and then we slide and it's understandable. But um, <laughs> what are you doing, Christian? This, I've got a little foot roller thing down there. I had to adjust it. Oh, nice. Lost it there. There it is. That sounds like a nice thing. But uh, the other thing is you're, uh, one of the benefits of being at home is you've got flexibility in your schedule. I know a lot of folks, the point about keeping a regular routine is a good one. But one of the benefits of working from home is taking advantage of that flexibility. And so I know that I oftentimes have to go out and run errands. I'll have uh, service folks to the house to fix heating, air, air conditioning sort of things. Um, maybe I need to take care of my sick kid. But, you know, those things, when you work from home, those are kind of the give backs that you get. I, I know you saying time with my sick kid is a give back. Well, yeah, in many cases it is because you would have to take time off from work otherwise. So don't be afraid to take advantage of some of those things. Um, you know, I joked about not getting started at 8 a.m. I mean, there are days, certainly days I get up and I'm, I'm running at like 7 in, in the morning, uh, my, seeing my kids off to school normally when we're not in the middle of a viral pandemic. Um, there are other times when I'll, you know, be up late at night and it's, you know, <laughs> I'm sure... Christian has gotten more than a, a couple pings from me and I've gotten them from him during my early morning hours. We'll call them, you know, one, two in the morning because he's two hours behind me over there in uh, wherever you are, Mars. Y Utah. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Mars, Utah. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, so, you know, West coast clients are three hours behind me. So you have to sometimes flex that stuff. And when you work, uh, we can be productive at all hours of the day. And I know many developers who either burn the midnight oil or get up at the butt crack of dawn and are doing things. So um, learn your own schedule and when you're most productive and try to take advantage of that. Um, you know, forcing yourself to work when you are not in a work mindset. And there are different reasons you might be. Some of them may be good, some of them not so good. But take advantage of your own personal productivity uh, and adapt to that. Um, as you start to work on your own more often. And, um, sometimes people work better at a Starbucks. I work with several folks who will go out to a coffee shop and sit there. That amount of noise around me is something of a distraction. Um, some people might think the music that I listen to would be a distraction to them, but it depends on what I'm doing. 
So I just try to adapt my conditions to uh, better suit my work style and in turn learn my work style as I go through this. Um, the other point is I like to practice what I call mindfulness moments where we can all get so wrapped up in everything we're doing. And it may seem like the sky is falling after, you know, two and a half hours of back-to-back -back meetings. Take a moment to just ground yourself, practice mindfulness. And if you're not familiar with mindfulness, this is the whole idea of just living in the moment, getting in touch. And there are multiple techniques, books, sites on this. Uh, it's very valuable and it does help keep you sane throughout a day, I found. So that's that's probably what I would suggest. And I'm sure Christian's got some wonderful ideas too. No, I, I, I like that idea too. I mean, no, I, one thing I would add that I, that I try to do is, uh, and sometimes it feels like obviously you get locked into productivity mode and getting something done. Um, you just, uh, you might suddenly look up and say, wow, I've been sitting here for three hours working on this document or reviewing this. I know, it, and it happens. But I do try to get up at least for uh, you know five minutes every hour and do something. Thankfully, I've got two little dogs that remind me that it's time to get up and yeah. do something. I do too. They're called Brendan and Sabrina. <laughs> yeah, those are. Uh, I, I've graduated from all my. So I got uh, uh, you know, four adult children, and they've all they're all gone. But uh, yeah, actually, we we just found out last night. We uh, our son that's supposed to come home in six months is coming home as soon as he can get a flight from Argentina. So yeah, they're they're. Shipping. You gonna be able to make it okay? Uh, yeah, no, it, it's funny. It's, uh, yeah, uh, that's a, that's a different conversation for everybody, but, uh, yeah, it's, it, it should be fine. Um, but it's, that's good. It, we're not sure when uh, he'll even be able to get a series of flights to back from South America. But, but anyway, um, you know, one of the things that I've been, uh, I've done is, is, so I've started wearing my fruity watch all the time. And I actually went and subscribed to one of these services that, I'm not like dieting, but it's, I'm, I am watching my steps and becoming aware of the time when I'm eating and other things, just because I would find that I would forget to eat breakfast and then it's four third in the afternoon. And by the time I'm like, Oh, I'm really hungry, but I've been busy this whole day and kind of yeah. forgotten. Why is my stomach bothering me? Right. Or, you know, and, and Sean knows this, I was for a long time was typically like a four and a half, five hour sleep a night guy. And that's not, <laughs> <laughs> you give your you say it was that long. Yeah. This is the guy who would pound like two monsters at midnight. Yeah, it so sounds that, like a developer right now. <laughs> yeah. well, that that part's not happening anymore. But uh, you know, I'm I'm constantly drinking. This is my favorite because it doesn't sweat at all. It's awesome. It's always full of ice. And I've been drinking. Nice. Uh, I drink sparkling water all day, every day. You know, sugar free, but. Um, yeah, but I'm back running again, but just out walking with the dogs and I'm doing that every hour. So you have to uh, do that. Otherwise you, I, I found for myself, I just get in a rut of, you know, it, it focus. Now, obviously if you're focused, you're getting stuff done and you're productive. I'm not saying halt that. Um, but at the end of that burst of productivity make sure that you get up move around and uh, the fruity watch is great for that because it constantly reminds you to to breathe to stand up and kind of those different things but yeah breathe it, it, well it, i hear that too it buzz, buzzes my arm in the middle of a conversation or something look down it says breathe i'm just like <laughs> yeah. that's fantastic but, hey we had hal join the panel as well hal are you there hal you're on mute Hal is here, but he is on mute. Uh, I'm trying to figure out the unmute button right now. <laughs> I'll unmute him. Hey, Hal, are you there? I'll maybe mute him again. So he, he, maybe okay. he didn't want to be maybe, muted. <laughs> maybe, maybe he walked away. Well, let's uh, go and check again, too. I, I don't see any questions coming up. So we have a few folks that are here attending. Do you have any product questions that you'd like help with? Product questions. You know, uh, one, a couple things, we can bring up some, some questions that are out there. I saw uh, a couple people asking about, um, do, do you have the ability to see in Teams, uh, do you have read receipts on channel discussions? And there were some people that kind of, uh, you know, made, kind of mocked the questioner with like, what well, do you have control issues and things like, look, there are valid reasons for wanting to know if, if people are, 
present and are participating. The answer, though, is, uh, is no. In a chat in Teams, of course, that's the exchange-based conversation, you can, uh, it's just like an, uh, an email being sent, so you can see if someone has read the message in that chat, but in the channel discussion, you cannot see that. And so your options to find out if people are reading content, you need to survey them. Um, you know, you can throw up a little poll uh, or something within the channel. Um, and then of course you can put, uh, you can have more visibility over documentation, but just not on the conversation. I don't know, anything to add to that, guys? Actually, you know, I've seen people run surveys in Teams, but I don't think it's incredibly intuitive. You want to you wanna screen share and actually run one right now? Just show how it's done. Are we both in a place yet? Do you, do you have one up and ready to share? Um, I've never won, run one. So uh, I'm actually being somewhat selfish here and saying, how do we do this? Well, and I don't and, know. I think from a survey perspective, Christian, uh, my personal opinion is like, you know, surveys are really good. But to be honest with you, like when you are in a meeting and if someone is not paying any attention and you're putting up a survey in front of the you know audience, Someone is, oh, there's a question. I just pick up the answer without thinking about that because that will make my participation. And to be honest, you will get 20 to 40% of garbage data, or I would say not the real data of what Rias thinks, or right. you think you just answer the question to make sure your participation is there. Well, well, that's why the if you think of the web conferencing technologies that give you some, some data on uh, uh, whether people are active or passive, and so they can actually read whether uh, if the they suddenly the uh, the screen becomes secondary to their email, and you can see that they're not paying attention, and they'll actually provide you stats on that data. Within Teams, there's not that capability, however. Uh, so, I, but I I completely agree. If if they're not reading the content or the conversation, uh, one they're not going to see the poll. If they do see the poll, they might go answer. Uh, untruthfully and just say, oh yeah, no, I'm paying attention. Click yes, I'm reading this. Not having read any of the, what you can do is trick people and say in the thread, don't answer the poll. This is only for people that aren't paying attention and then place a poll in there. Ooh, that's, <laughs> that's a good nice. idea. <laughs> So you, you it's remember a, those it's teachers? A, those teachers that would do that in school, they'd, they'd say read, read the, the last questions. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Admiral Akbar going, it's a trap. Yeah. <laughs> There's the, uh, yeah, we, we should, uh, we could come up with a list of things, you know, uh, not to do to, uh, to build trust in community. <laughs> that would be one of them. That's hilarious. I want to try this with my team meetings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know. I want to try that as well. Yeah. Just to mess with people. Nice. All right. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Any other, uh, any other issues or questions that have come up recently that, uh, you've been able to answer for people? I had a one-on-one -on -one meeting, um, last Friday. I was recently the background here to, um, set the stage. I was supposed to speak at, uh, the cloud Saturday, the SharePoint, uh, not SharePoint, but rather uh, the Chicago suburbs, suburbs were running. And I had to cancel last minute for that event because my furnace went on the fritz. And I found out from the organizers after the fact that there were a handful of people who showed up for my session who indicated they had specifically come up to see my session. So I felt really bad. So when I reached out to these folks, um, the organizers, you know, um, uh, Jack Fru, uh, Craig Janke were kind enough to gather their information, pass it on to me. And I approached them in email and said, hey, I'd be willing to do like a team session uh, on my presentation or give you like one hour of time where we sit down and just discuss whatever you want to discuss. Um, and I've had one person take me up on that so far. And that was last Friday. And I got together with this person and we had a, we spent over two hours on a team session. I went through my material she had lots of questions. She was just, she was relatively new to SharePoint uh, in the last six months. And it sounded like she was with an organization that was adopting uh, Office 365. And she had, a, had the potential to make a great impact there 
and really influenced the way things went. Um, she's a <laughs> she's actually a PhD physicist who came from a background studying magnetics, um, which is kind of interesting. My background is chemistry, so uh, we had a bit to talk about there. But she was wondering, you know, what should she focus on? How can she kind of steer the direction of Office 365 at her company while also getting to know the technology better. So I'm going to kind of redirect your question as, you know, you've probably got some very specific thoughts around this, Christian. Um, what are some good ways that somebody just getting into this can not only learn, but maximize the direction their company might be going at the same time? Kind of like the just in time getting things in position and not make any bad decisions when they're starting out. So um, moving forward perfectly, not uh, not perfectly. Anything. <laughs> Nothing's perfect, not in this world. Um, I, you know, just kind of in 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 general, like how how do you best look? I, I mean, my my first thought is that like if you um, with any uh, ongoing adoption engagement strategy, um, you need to have uh, you know the content you need to have. Uh, you know, the training, the educational aspect of that. You can't just assume that, well, people know how to use the office suite of tools. And, and we had the last version of SharePoint. And so now we moved to SharePoint online and they'll, people will figure it out. There's enough that changes on a regular basis that even, you know, MVPs that are looking at it on a regular basis are really like confused by, you know, some changes and, and uh, have to, right. And we have to talk to each other and be like, are you aware that this button moved or this thing changed or this got renamed? Or what am I doing this, wrong? Right. Um, and, and so, I mean, I, I'm a big fan of, of tools like uh, the, the in-context tools, uh, like Visual SP and Content Panda to be able to, uh, you, know, uh, you know, in your employees, if you can go and buy a third-party tool, so that if you're in using something like SharePoint, be like, I don't understand how to use this. Turn on the tool. Suddenly it highlights, hey, there's three videos of how to use that function that I'm struggling with. Those kinds point. of things are really, are really cool. Um, otherwise, I mean, uh, one of the most common questions that I'm asked is, you know, how do you keep up with everything? And the answer is uh, we don't. Yeah. We have to rely on each other. So uh, I'm constantly... I, so I follow a bunch of different threads. I follow the Microsoft 360 or the, the um, uh, regarding 365 team. Uh, there's a bunch of people, uh, you know, Daryl's a service on Twitter. So uh, Daryl Webster and Lorian Strand and, and Alistair Pugin and, and uh, you know, Tracy Vanderskip and a bunch of folks that are Daniel Glenn. Uh, I keep going down yeah. the list. Sarah Hussey. And, yeah. Anyway, a bunch of people that participate within that. It's just a fantastic community. And then there's of course live shows. Uh, you know, if uh, you know if you're into the Power BI and and the analysis side of things, is the Bifocal podcast with Himmelstein and John White doing that is fantastic. Um, I mean, I I really like the even though I'm not in the you know the, I'm not in the dev space, but the the PNP broadcast, the stuff that uh, Vesa and and you know, yeah. and, and Waldeck do are fantastic. Um, I enjoy a lot of those and they're covering a broad range of topics and not always just development topics. Um, and so you just have to go out and kind of consume from the, from the, uh, the community. Hey, we do have a couple of questions from Christine I want to handle. Uh, and that's something I know a little bit about. Um, so the new office app, and if you've not seen it and, and, um, I should say that, so I did blog about some of this uh, out on uh, buckleyplanet.com. If you go in a couple of weeks ago, I, I had a blog post on it. Um, but she says that the new Office app, she hasn't been able to transfer camera media files using the QR code. Um, she can transfer the Word files. However, if I, if I pick media, camera photos, I get unsupported file type. Um, not seen that error message, uh, uh, but I have heard that a couple people have been uh, unable to um, find any, any, uh, uh, videos. Hmm. Um, and it's, uh, I'm looking for if there has been an updated response. Well, let's ask first, Christine, what kind of phone do you have? And I'm not seeing anything. Yeah. So, uh, so what, 
What I can say is on the uh, uh, you know, on the second half of your question, we'll come back to that one. See if we can find a, a, you know, collectively an answer to that. And um, I think just an FYI on this yeah. one, uh, there might be a couple of things that you want to check is your global policies on the team side. If your administrator has blocked a certain type file type that they block from a transfer perspective, or uh, if you're trying to do, I assume you're trying to do it from your phone, check with your MDM provider as well. You might have some MDM policies deployed that restrict the access for managed app to access yeah. non-managed applications as well. That's and that point. might be an yeah. issue as well. So is it, you know, are you even using something like Intune or an MDM? Um, is it a company phone or is it your personal phone, that sort of thing? Right. Yeah, because yeah, the way that it's supposed to work, yeah, it's a personal phone. The way that it's supposed to work to answer the second half, it's like when you go into that process and when you, um, when you pair your phone with your PC, for folks that aren't aware of the, the new Office app, so it, it combines really five apps into one. Uh, so Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, as well as to some degree, um, the OneDrive app, as well as Office Lens. Uh, and so it has the nice little Office logo. It, it streamlines that. It adds some other additional functionality, some things that we've heard about months ago, like the ability to take a picture of, uh, of, a, uh, of a table in a magazine. If you come across some stat uh, and you're reading along, and it can actually convert that table into an Excel usable, uh, you know, into cells of data. And, and so you can snap a picture, drop it in, and then start working with that and modify that data. It can also convert text that's in an image. So again, looking at a magazine and Do there's a the title OCR. OCRs that, that, that content. Um, it, I found that my experience to be a little bit flaky in its uh, ability to, to, to capture and, and hmm. to uh, convert that text. Um, but again, it, it learns, it, it gets smarter. Um, but when you have that, have phone big enough to hold it. sorry, I said, I'm glad you have a phone big enough to hold it. Yeah. <laughs> but That's it's a problem with that, yeah. with, with that app. It, it, I mean, if, you, if you look at Excel and PowerPoint and Word as the separate mobile apps, all three of them have the ability to allow you to put your data and cache into your external storage, your micro SD card. Right. The main outlook that, 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 that Microsoft Office app does not. Everything has to stay in main memory. So if you get any kind of busy with it, you're looking at that thing eating up a couple of gigs of your memory. And yeah. uh, on my phone, I, I have an old phone. It's an LG G5. It was a pretty good phone in its day. It still works really great. I can't update it any further, but it's only got 32 gigs of RAM. So between, between Office Mobile and, uh, and Outlook Mobile, I can pretty well eliminate the entire memory in that machine without having another app running how that sounds dangerously mobile. like what back in my day <laughs> yeah well it's yeah. and and how out of you saw my blog post that i actually uh, uh mentioned your comment that you made uh when i posted that so yeah yeah thanks for that that's uh that's a that's a good point something to watch the what i was going to make the yeah the question of where the the files are transferred for christine second half of christine's question um is that when you have the pairing there, it'll actually, uh, it, it'll, it'll open it up uh, and, and then it'll ask you where you wanna save them file, individual file by, by file. And so what I've not done, I've not gone in there and explored to see, but I, I didn't see that it's not part of the out of the box experience is to dedicate a location for all those things so it can just move them across. So it does have you, it, it removes the name of the file. So you, you know, as you're saving them, it's a, it doesn't transfer, you know, any data into the, the name of the file, uh, you know, so that you, you like timestamp or anything other than the, the metadata that comes with the file transfer itself. But uh, so you have to name the file and then move it. You can move each individual if you're, uh, you know, trying to move 10 images. And I find myself, you know, each time naming it, saving it in one at a time uh, into uh, sometimes different locations. So that's part of that process. If you're not seeing that process, which is automated, um, it's, it's probably, I would, uh, you know, as Ria said, the first half of the question, um, it, you know, it could be some other, uh, well, no, it's a, it's a personal phone. So it's not going to be some other 
you know, uh, uh, mobile management rule policy that's, that's blocking that. I can still think of uh, app protection policies for unenrolled devices as well. If they might have those, in, you know, just an example with the Intune app protection policies, you can configure the policies for unmanaged devices and you can restrict the copy paste or the move of the data from a corporate managed app to an unmanaged app as well. So even though if your device is not managed by an MDM provider like Intune or Mobile Iron or any third party MDM, you can still have those app production policies to protect the data on the application level. Yeah. So I, I know she can set a default storage location with it. So you can at least guarantee that things go there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and Christine comments that it's kind of surprising she can't find documentation on on that. Um, right. I mean, that's the problem. This is like brand new, and uh, you know, this is this is the kind of feedback that uh, we all need to go out to uh, the Microsoft uh, you know, tech community uh, to that site uh, and go log it as as a as a bug, as an issue, so that Microsoft is aware and they can address it. They are watching and they are listening to this kind of feedback. Uh, and so they're definitely lacking some documentation around uh, issues with the new Office app. So I think it's just a matter of time before it's out there. But you know, yeah. So Christine, you might want to step back from the bleeding edge to just the cutting edge. <laughs> just a suggestion. Uh, so helpful, Sean. <laughs> I know. Thank you for stating the obvious. <laughs> And I think the next question that we have from Christine, which I actually answered in the chat window as well, it's more of a changing the uh, team meeting uh, information of like who can join the meeting and all this stuff. So How are you guys I, seeing these questions? It's in the it, chat. I'm looking at this. I'm looking at the chat. Well, I have from Hal and all panelists, but I don't have. Oh, sorry, it's not in the chat. It's a Q&A session. There's a Q&A module. Click on Q&A. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, hey, that does it. So, uh, got to be smarter than the app. I got it. Yep, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I think from this uh, perspective of like who can join or if you can create an open ended meeting that anybody can join. So, technically, you can do it at like, two different levels. One is you can actually have your default configurations in the Teams uh, for uh, as a Teams administrator to modify like anyone can join the meeting without any approval. The second one is you as an individual user, you can modify your team meeting information before you send the meeting invite to anyone and you can decide like who can join the meeting. My recommendation or uh, uh, what I would say is do not modify these settings at the tenant level because you might have a lot of meetings in the organization which are confidential or from a compliance perspective you do not want anyone to join those meetings, right? If they get the meeting information. So you really, really want to keep it to a very specific meetings like webinars, just an example, right? You want to put it up on the Yammer and just set up an individual meeting and change the meeting options of like anyone can join the meeting and put it up on Yammer or the public forums that you want to put it up, right? But you do not want to set it up at the organization level. Sean, Christian, anything that you guys want to add on this one? You clearly know more about this than I do. Yeah, I, I that. I'm just, you know, I just became aware of the application recently. So <laughs> <laughs> I am not to... on the cutting edge, the latest and greatest. I tend to lag a little bit. So I can appreciate the user perspective. <laughs> Well, one thing, so, I, so uh, there's a couple questions that are uh, recent questions that are out in the, so I'm looking at the um, uh, Facebook team. It looks like Chris, Christine has another question there, but um, there's another the question that was asked by Marco um, uh, you know, yesterday about, you know, is it possible to clear the channels in Teams? And uh, let me look at this question from this comment from Christine. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if there's a best practice, Christine. Uh, okay, the way she's doing it now, the opening of the meeting is to create a meeting with one other person, then just copy the link and paste it to Yammer. Wasn't sure if there was some best practice in doing that. Yeah, so. Um, so is it possible to clear the channels and teams? This is one of the first questions that was asked when Teams 
uh, went went live, uh, asked in a slightly different way. People, it's, it's about the same answer. People were asking, "Hey, is there a way to archive a channel?" And then the question of formally archive a team. <laughs> well, so that's that's the thing. If if, if uh, so, the 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 comment that Marco made, he said, "Look, it's it's becoming messy." Um, and there are, of course, Teams is built on uh, on the two other workloads, Exchange and SharePoint. And so to archive a Microsoft team means that you're archiving all the content and then archiving all the conversations. And so then the default experience is the SharePoint experience for all the content, so your files and images, uh, and then all the conversations and the meetings and all of that history is on the Exchange side. So you can archive both of those pieces. However, there's not a you know, out of the box way to archive uh, or clear the uh, you know at a channel level or in a, a team. In fact, it's uh, the best thing that you can do uh, without uh, obstructing uh, and removing, deleting content and access to people and the conversations that are in there is kind of hide it from your view. And so, by default, all of your active teams and channels are visible. And so you can favorite them or unfavorite them and unfavorite the, them removes them from your visibility. Uh, and so that's, and so our, say at the channel or the team, uh, there, uh, again, there are ways of, if you need to formally archive, if you're saying, Hey, we want to remove this from the system, no, remove all access that, you know, to the, to the content as it stands, archive everything into SharePoint, back it up to disk, whatever you want to do, um, download it to your home PC, whatever the process is for archiving your content. And then the same with the exchange and the conversations, but just realize then all of the chat history, all the context of the conversation to that content is all then disconnected and removed by hiding it. Um, and so you might shut off access to all the content and still have access to the conversations. Um, is that if then if somebody in a thread, a conversation goes and does a historical search, finds a conversation that's relevant to what they need to work on now, and then finds that they can't get access, they can then at least re request access to that content. So they can do that when it's archived, when it's, uh, you know, but it's still the relationships, the links between conversations and content are all still in the system. So from a historical standpoint, all the, the data is still there. I yeah, know. I just dropped a link in the Zoom webinar chat, not in the Q&A module, but uh, somebody at ShareGate actually put up a, uh, a post on this, manage clutter and archive content, how to archive a team in uh, Microsoft Teams. So it might be worth a read if you haven't found it already. I'm not doing anything more special than Googling it. And just an FI, I mean, this feature of like, having an actual team slash channel to be archived. This is actually one of the feature which is requested as part of the user voice. And I was just casually following up that, uh, you know, user voice as well. Microsoft haven't done anything on that yet, but it's actually in the Microsoft to-do list as well to actually make it an official feature as part of the Microsoft Teams to where users or administrators actually can archive channels slash teams as well. And I'm actually gonna put it up in the chat window as well just for reference. Excellent. Uh, let's see. I'm just looking. I'm just monitoring on Facebook. Any other questions? We've got 14 more minutes during this wow. session. That's Fine. it. It's uh, well. You talk too much, Christian. I I know that. <laughs> Don't need you to tell me that. Tell me something I don't know. Yeah. My, my wife reminds me of that. <laughs> yeah, I could appreciate that. I'm reminded of many things by my wife, too. Yeah. She can't hear me. She's in the other room. <laughs> she can see this webinar. <laughs> <laughs> if she were to tune into this webinar, I would be incredibly impressed and probably incredibly in trouble. <laughs> Uh, let's see what else any other big news that uh, came out product news that we want to talk about briefly Anything on the heels of the MVP summit that we're actually allowed to talk about no Sean We're not allowed oh. to talk about that stuff. 
those three letters n d a yeah um Let's see. SharePoint conference has been kicked into next year. I think everybody knows that now. Yeah. Yeah. There's was, just so many. Uh, I, I was supposed to be in uh, in a week and a half, two weeks. I was going to, uh, two weeks out, I was going to be heading over to India to do one of the Ignite the Tours. Kind of bummed about that. Part of India I've not been to. Mm. Yeah. We were going to have a conference till June is being postponed or canceled. Yeah. Some of them have dates, some of them Phoenix don't. Phoenix is going to hold a sequel Saturday on April 4th, and that's, of course, gone. Did you say yeah. Phoenix, Hal? Yeah, I think, uh, Phoenix? I, think, I think just about everything in April uh, and into May. I think the next big one we're waiting to hear about is the uh, Collab Summit in uh, the first week in June over in Germany. Uh, so I know Adis is uh, waiting to yeah. see how things pan out. Like, I, you know... I, I didn't have my flights booked. Yeah, I saw a uh, news article this morning that uh, Germany is seeing the first leveling of new cases. So maybe there's hope. Mm. We're not all doomed. Well, by that, I mean, we're all doomed, but. Yeah. Uh, let's see, what else? What else is new? Um, we have an open one here. Does anyone know if home sites are GA yet? Also, if you have a single tenant, is there any way to have more than one home site? Good question. And I think the answer is no. You're not allowed to have more than one home site, at least not yet. And I don't know if that's on the product roadmap. Uh, I just saw something. I'm looking. I just saw something about, but I don't know if it was... Uh, that they went GA or that there's a date for GA. Um, Where are you getting your information, Christine? <laughs> Who are you paying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which APIs you are using that we don't have. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, because we want access to who's got the open trench coat selling you things. Yeah, I'm not finding anything new on it. Um, so my gut would say it's not Sue not Hanley. Oh, well. yeah, I don't know if you could trust that Sue Hanley. I don't uh, know. Yeah. You know, she's, <laughs> she's a little shifty. <laughs> I'd watch her shifty little Jewish woman. <laughs> yep. No, nah, Sue's great. I mean, if Sue, Sue says it's out there, even if Microsoft says it's not out there, if Sue says it's out there. It's out there. It's out there. Yeah. I yeah. would believe Sue most of the time before anyone at Microsoft. I, I pay, this is a high compliment to people. There, there are a handful of people in the community that I would say this about, but Sue Hanley is one of those people where, who Microsoft goes to, to answer questions about Microsoft stuff. This is true. Yeah. yeah. There, there's a, there's just a few people that are like that, but, um, Oh, here's one. Um, so I did a, a blog post about this. Uh, I sorry, just saw another uh, comment um, about uh, teams in hybrid environments, and mm. uh, and and part of this goes to uh, an announcement. I think it was in Redmond Magazine a couple days ago, um, talking about how um, teams it's forthcoming stuff this year, so there's no ga date for it but i think it was a kurt Mackey article was talking about um uh some you know offline capability in teams so this has been a question i've heard a few times and i did a blog post back on march 10th um called microsoft teams in a hybrid environment uh there's a lot of documentation that's out there and again it, what makes it a little more uh, complex is the fact again that it's sharepoint and exchange workloads and and your hybrid environment, uh, it, it's, I think, the minimal impact if you have a hybrid SharePoint environment. So you have SharePoint on-premises as well as using, uh, you know, Office 365 and have SharePoint online. Because Teams is a cloud-based service. So you, you must have, you, know, you deploy Teams, it deploys uh, SharePoint online. And for it to work to its fullest capability, uh, exchange online. Uh, and, and so by, you, you can't, not have SharePoint online. However, you can be running on Exchange on premises and have the hybrid connector and it will work, although you won't have all the full capability. Uh, and so that's, 
uh, it'll be exciting to see Microsoft offer more capability so that with the desktop version of uh, Microsoft Teams, that you'll have more of a, a more robust experience that if you go offline or are in a low bandwidth situation where you're able to collaborate and it'll sync as soon as it, uh, it you know, it catch up when it's back online. That just to say that sense. sounds like hanging a kick me sign on my back right now, trying to do that across hybrid. Right. And, uh, you know, we can get into the religious discussions of whether you should have a hybrid environment or not and what uh, that yeah. actually means and whether the things that you think that you're protecting by having things on-prem are really protected or not. Stop the madness, Christian. Sean, do you want to get into that in detail and pain, painful, painstaking detail? Do you see me hiding my head right now? Yes, I do. It's not the right time. <laughs> uh, yeah. Ugh. Yeah, and also I, I see Christine, your comment says uh, Sue posted about teams being up to 350. Haven't seen that one. Uh, and especially during this time of increased use and demand and load. So it, the fact that the, the uh, <laughs> if it disappeared, maybe rightly so, I've not seen that. And I, uh, you know, this question was just asked. And I will say, and we had our, the MVP summit was last week, all week. And we're, we all should have been in Seattle, but we were online instead. And this actually came up and someone from the product team once again said, yeah, there's that cap of 250. So, um, yeah, I've not yeah, as a matter of fact, I got, uh, one of the things I personally do when it just comes from the PGIs that all the, all the PGIs I watch, uh, it is not at all uncommon for me to have two different, uh, teams sessions going teams meetings going at the same time one in the app and one in the browser i can i thought you can run up to three so you're the guy sucking um, all the bandwidth hell <laughs> i got yelled at for that i got yelled at for that the first day please one session at a time uh because of the 250 seat limit yep um I, I was gratified later than later a couple of a day or two later to find out because they, they had a they had a little informal uh pound mvp buzz bar going in the community room yep and uh, a couple of them were saying oh heck i had four or five sessions up at once so i, I didn't feel so bad then and i in, in all honesty i did uh, talk to one of the pms the uh, team's pms uh i joined one of the sessions a little bit before the meeting and uh, mentioned that to her and she says well basically just just keep an eye on the head count in the room because it's always shown if it can it's close yeah think about dropping otherwise that you're okay. So for what that's worth. Yeah. But still it's a 250 head limit. Yeah. And it's never a bad idea to uh, go conservative when you're right. talking limits and software boundaries. Well, if, the, if that is a, it's an issue for an organization that has, you have more than 250 people that you need to include in, in a session. And that's what the, uh, the, the live, uh, you know, capability is and that's up to 10,000 participants and so for like the keynotes for the summit last week we're using the live it was a broadcast rather so you lose the collaborative capability um, but you, uh, uh, you you got some rudimentary f features one of the things that uh, I also heard uh, that uh, you know, discussions around was Microsoft doing a write-up of running the summit and providing that guidance to companies that might want to run an internal, uh, you know, event like that, uh, and so kind of learning from what Microsoft did to build out and run in parallel all of these sessions. Yeah, it's worth feedback. It's worth pointing out that it was not a flawless experience. By it was case. not. Yeah. Um, yeah. Lots of folks had connection issues, getting the right links to get to virtual sessions. Sessions being rescheduled and canceled. Uh, they were dealing with all of that, and so I'm sure they developed a handbook or at least a, a note list of various practices that worked and those that didn't. So, um, Mr. Stephen Fowler joined us. I saw He's it. asking about, uh, did you talk about helping organizations with a Corona portal? Um, we did not. Um, I do know that there are folks who are doing that, uh, at least one company here in the Cincinnati area. Um, is trying to rapidly get information out. 
Uh, I don't think I'm at liberty to speak about whom, but I was approached about it. And I know that people are looking at disseminating information via SharePoint. How about you guys? Have you seen anything? I'm looking now. So uh, uh, Mark Cashman provided, I think he did the uh, blog post. Hang on, I'm, I'm looking for it. Yeah, and Stephen gave us a, a link to uh, Jared's. Oh, that's what, oh, that's right. But there's actually a, a SharePoint template Oh, for kind of a, a you know a health response. Cool. Thanks for bringing that up, Stephen. That's a very timely and appropriate question. Yeah, hang on. I'm, I'm out looking for it. Just a second. You demand. You know, it's exciting to watch video of somebody scrolling through Twitter. <laughs> so. The way we've got to do this, I think, for the next session is I have to be juggling or something while you're <laughs> typing. Uh, I'll see if I can spruce up my background and do all sorts of well, interesting here it is. things. Uh, yeah, so build a crisis management site to connect people and information. Uh, and on tech community, let me grab the link. There it is. Yeah, so... I'll put it in the chat there, and I'll put it over on Facebook as well. Yeah, yeah. Rusty Brown saying IW Mentor did a great job on the crisis site. So hat tip to IW Mentor. Wonder Laura. We raise our coffee mugs to you. Yeah, Wonder Laura yeah. and her minions. Well, we've got one more minute. Uh, any other outstanding questions? Of course, they flow in here at the uh, at the end. Of course, they'll have to just stay tuned for the next one in eight hours. Is that what we're doing? Yeah. Maybe I'll be in my jammies. No, we don't need that. We don't need that at all. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's, that's it for questions. That's all I see. So, well, Hey, really appreciate, uh, you know, Riaz, Sean, Hal for joining, uh, for those uh, attendees that, that jumped on at some point yet, yeah, we'll be doing this again at uh, 4 PM Pacific today. Uh, we may adjust on that next week, but the plan is to do this every Monday until we don't need to do it anymore. And I can fully verify that we have no preordained format. <laughs> <laughs> it's Q and A. It's it's an ask the experts panel. That's it. Yeah. As soon as we find the experts. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks a lot, everybody, for joining. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Thanks, Christian. Um, all right. What I was saying. All right. This the new Office app. If you've not yet seen it had a chance to take a look at it. Uh, you probably saw some of the press around it. Essentially, uh, on mobile devices, it combines um, three primary apps, but I'd say five apps in total. Uh, so it, uh, Excel, PowerPoint, and uh, Word, as well as, to some degree, the OneDrive application, as well as Office Lens, one of my favorites. And so it's a tool that I, I use fairly often. And so it's bundled all that together. It's also uh, some of the capabilities that we knew months ago were coming and were, were waiting for, like your ability to uh, transform an image into text uh, or an image of a table or graph, because it works with both, I experimented on just a visual graph, a visualization of data. And it converted that into, uh, and it wasn't pretty what it did with that, that visual uh, but it converted into Excel, so I could actually go in and work and modify with the data that was there. With a table, it's a little bit cleaner, so it actually you know, the data that's in the visualization, like if you're reading a magazine, you see a, a, a table of data, and you're like, wow, I really want that, you know, and you, you can't find the source material for it. You can actually take a picture of that, and then uh, it will OCR it and format that for Excel and bring that over. Some people have had difficulty, and when you connect with your, your phone, with your PC, and transfer files, uh, it, they're having some issues. And the complaint was, 
I fully recognize there's a, a lack of documentation yet from Microsoft on some of those issues. So with any of the problems, if you see issues, uh, please remember to go in and log those issues. It's, it's, uh, it's critical that you do that uh, so that Microsoft has the data and they can uh, respond officially to those things. Because Microsoft, do you think of like user voice, if you're not familiar with user voice, where you can actually go and make feature requests. Uh, if they have uh, you know, five or more people that are uh, you know, upvote something that are you know, like uh, something, then they will uh, respond to that. I don't remember how many, I used to talk about this all the time, I don't remember how many votes that it takes for them to, uh, uh, to, to actually you know, move it into, into a place. I think you know, with any product, you, know, you can have thousands of votes and Microsoft says, you know, we're never going to do this. It's not part of the roadmap, it doesn't fit in with our vision for the product. But most of the incremental fixes that people are looking for, Microsoft is very responsive to come back and, and either address, especially for something like documentation. If this is a known issue or if we're all just using the new tool wrong, incorrectly in a way that it's, it's not working as expected, and clarify that, document, and help us out so they, they need us to respond. Um, so with that, and Hal, are you on? Can you hear me? Yes, certainly I can. Hal, yeah. I'm here. So uh, I'm turn so, my video on because I don't think it. I don't think people can. Ah, uh, no worries. Uh, so uh, joining on the the panel so far, we've got uh, so Hal Hostetler is a fellow MVP and. Uh, so it, we've got uh, a couple people that are uh, on the, the call and a couple people, uh, let's see how many people are viewing. Um, a few people are also viewing over on the live stream. If you have any questions, um, yeah, and then, you know, Himmelstein's commenting, making some jokes there. Uh, Jason, why don't you click on the link, come join the conversation, answer some questions. Hey, Hal, from our call this morning, did you, uh, any uh, questions or issues that uh, you've seen frequently out there that uh, you thought would be good to address on this? Um, sorry, I just got here. What were you discussing before I showed up? Or talking oh, I was, about this morning's call? Yeah, I was talking about just about the office, the new office app. Oh, well. <laughs> It's one of those things that uh, I, I wish I could really explore it more. I, what I'm going to have to do basically is just clean out a whole bunch of stuff off my phone, um, and so I got enough room to sit down and really play and get that thing whirl. From the well, standpoint of what it's advertised that it will do, it's incredible. Yeah. It's the slickest thing since sliced bread. I mean, I played with it a little bit, uh, a little bit of the text capture of the uh, of using the the office lens features and uh, looking at various things. It just surprised the daylights out of me when it came up and showed me all my notes. Uh, all of my quick, but basically uh, sticky notes uh, right off the bat. It, uh, it's very easy to set up from the other accounts that I had listed on my phone. Basically, it picked those up and just said, you want them? I said, yeah, and off we go to the races. It, it, it sets up, it's smooth, it's, it's, it's slick. I really haven't run into a lot of bugs again because of the memory issues. I haven't played with it extensively. Yeah. So. Well, no worries. I, I was, hey, Hal, I wasn't talking about, like, you know, I was talking about other, other, any other questions, not, not about the Office app, but any, anything else that you see, frequent questions that are out there. Uh, so as, as we're waiting for any questions to be asked from the crowd, uh, the, the almost crowd, um, I was just kind of covering off uh, you know, that, that topic and other things that I've uh, you know, been trying to answer for the community over the last couple of weeks through, through my blog. Uh, I talked to this <laughs> morning about um, uh, like hybrid and teams and Microsoft. In fact, I just reposted a link today, earlier today, um, from, uh, it was actually our, uh, Redmond Channel Partners magazine. I think it was Kurt Mackey article uh, that uh, where he talked about you know, the new features and the um, and I don't have it open of course I don't have it open in front of me uh, but talking about how Microsoft Teams will have an offline or a low bandwidth uh, you know option 
or capabilities built into it. So that's something to look forward to. Um, we also talked about uh, this morning uh, briefly. So Mark Cashman did an article out on March 9th uh, called Build a Crisis Management Site to Connect People and Information. And so if you've not looked at that article, that's just another great resource if you are looking at uh, enabling your uh, your your organization to, with more information about what's going on just internally or just in general in country. Let me share that link. There it's in the chat and I will also post it over on uh, Facebook. And, uh, and there we go, that, that link is there. So that came up today. Um, let's see, uh, and kind of, you know, adding on to that, it's been one of the uh, more popular blog posts in the last 30 days. It's been up in the top three of the, of the posts that I've written is the, uh, uh, you know, so I, as, as part of the, you know, the monthly productivity tips webinar that I do with Tom Duff, which we're doing tomorrow, by the way, if you're interested in specifically end user productivity and some team. So, so most of them are individual, but some are team-based productivity activities. But is uh, one of the ones that I shared that I wrote about is the uh, build your own learning portal with learning pathways and pointed people to a, and I will share the link to this as well, if you're interested. If you've not yet gone and built a learning portal, it's just a, it's a SharePoint template, uh, as well as then a number of you know, just content resources uh, by industry, by role, just a bunch of great content that's out there. So you can go and customize and build something with content out of the box from Microsoft. Of course, you can always add that on uh, with your own content and build out a, a portal. Um, but uh, there's the link in both locations as well to that. And let's see. Uh, do, do. Is it, there's any. All right. So for the folks that are on watching, oh, let me move. Sherman Miller needs to be over here. Uh, any questions that we can answer for you? And this might be Hal and Sherman, it might be us chatting. You know how these things generally go is that, um, you know, the questions all roll in right within the last like five, 10 minutes. Oh, and guess when I, when do I, when I have to pull out is 445 Pacific. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how are you doing? Believe it or not, yeah, hey, pretty good. How are you doing? Are you going to come on camera or are you being shy? I can. Did I, did I comb my hair? Hang on a second. Oh, how do I, how do I use this thing? Ah, there he is. I'm glad you combed your hair. It would have been embarrassing. So I didn't shave though. Yeah. Well, yeah. Neither do I. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the, uh, Hey, I, I don't know where to go. Nobody to impress. Well, you know, my wife and there's Hal. He's muted, but at least we can see him now. So we can. <laughs> there. Sorry about that. Hi there. <laughs> Well, it's great to have both of you guys on. Um, yeah, we're, uh, yeah, uh, you know, the, the, the point of this is that if there's you know, people that queue up questions and maybe we, you know, next week we'll, we'll try it again and people will have asked questions. I'll actually be posting the recordings out to YouTube and out, out on the blog and queuing up any, any questions. So I know, you know, Hal and Sherman, are there, I mean, are there any questions that you've heard or people have asked you in the last, you know, week or so that, uh, you know, you'd like to share uh, some guidance with the audience? It's definitely been a lot more interest, obviously, with Teams and um, this sudden rush to have everyone work remotely. I mean, we're all seeing that, all the crazy act activity on Twitter. And um, <clears throat> you also, so I'm actually doing a couple sessions tomorrow for a company 
saying, hey, help us uh, do a quick intro to Teams. And of course, because they're being rushed into it, one of the things that they're saying is like, we're, but we're not ready to open it up to the actual Teams part. So they're just they're just using it basically as a Skype replacement just for the one-on-one -on -one chats and the ad hoc chats. So that'd be challenging. Well, there's a few groups that have used it. So, so I'll be doing two sessions. One session is actually for uh, the sales team that, and the, the leader there is really gung-ho about using Teams and gets it. Uh, so the, the session will be a little bit different, but it'll be interesting to see how it works for the, because um, I said to the IT manager, so, you, so just to be clear, you don't want me to talk about Teams itself, even though it's kind of the icon that's right beneath chat. <laughs> I'm like, okay, all right, I get that. So that's one thing. And uh, to your point about um, the crisis management site, it's interesting. I, I haven't played around with that yet, but uh, a lot of the companies, again, that I've been working with, well, the two or three or whatever, they've already got something going on. Like they didn't know about it. So they said, hey, we'll create a communication site and communicate with our employees. And then we'll have a separate team collaboration site um, for the response team. So again, in, the, in that second scenario with second client, uh, they've rushed into it. I'm seeing kind of stuff that is done in teams that I wouldn't recommend. And so, but they're in it, right? It's kind of like, again, they're very reactive. It's like, hey, help us kind of do this, that, and the other. And I'm looking at it going, okay, well, how much do I say? And kind of keep my mouth shut because they're being slammed with just COVID-19 related stuff. And we'll fix some of the other issues later. Yeah. That's, that's, it's, uh, it's hard. Uh, you know, it's, it, I was thinking about some of the, the issues, the questions that have come up. There's, I've seen like over in the Office 365 community page on Facebook, uh, which is a fairly active uh, you know, community in Facebook. And so I'm, I always post content over there. Of course, out in the tech community as well. But there's a, out on the Facebook group, there's just a ton of questions from uh, you know, folks that are obviously brand new to Teams, uh, a lot in the, the education sector that are having problems uh, you know, getting things up and running. And we were kind of talking about this this morning's session about uh, you know, problems with the app and making sure like, does your organization have some policies in, in mobile device management that could be impacting that? Um, and, and the, I think it's you know, some of the similar issues, things that we tend to forget about is a lot of these issues with just set up a configuration, especially where you have a very distributed organization um, being sensitive to the fact that, hey, we, we might not have a standardized desktop and how people are trying to to connect and so i think we're it, it's it, it's kind of like i just brought me back to some of the questions back in the early days of sharepoint and the you know before it was called office 365 and the mms times of dealing with basic connectivity issues before you even start talking about functionality so that that's been interesting but when you have well, how, what was the percent, like 500% increase in usage in, in, in a week and a half or whatever it was? Just crazy numbers of growth around. Just like, just like our stocks. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and, and as we can see, that'll all be sustainable. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, so there's, uh, and the other thing it, that we have to be careful not to forget about is that, uh, especially in the MVP community, the experts, the speakers, the people that travel around do all these events, um, is that, I mean, I understand, we, we tend to get bored with some topics that we've done dozens of times at multiple events and kind of move on. And we're, we're excited to go jump on the next greatest, the next feature, whatever comes coming out. And people still need to have those fundamentals covered, uh, and so it's it's good to um, you know things like this. I'm I'm happy to answer even basic questions about you know using the applications. So uh, I'm just checking to see if there's any other. Do -do. Do -do. Yeah, Phil is on chatting it up, but he doesn't want to, he's too frightened to come and join us on the panel, apparently. Um, but uh, seeing some comments over on Facebook. Um, what else? Besides Microsoft Teams, I know that's the hot property. Um, 
did either of you guys catch the uh, the webinar? We had Antonio Mayo uh, do a webinar for our local user group last week, and of course we broadcast that out there on Project Cortex. I did not see that. Yeah, so that no, is. I didn't I, either. I should share that link. Hang on. Well, I don't have an organization. I don't have a, a customer that's part of the, uh, the the beta that's going on. So I don't have any deeper insights uh, into what's happening there than anyone else. Um, but if you're looking for, if you want to know about Project Cortex, what it is, and just an overview, um, Antonio did a great job. Okay, there it's in the chat. Cortex uh, uh, overview. I'll paste that over in Facebook as well. Yeah, so I mean, there's just some exciting stuff that's that's coming out. Uh, a lot of uh, search-based stuff. A lot of you know, Project Cortex is all AI and and search-based and. and giving a, a, a snapshot of what Microsoft is, where they're going with the technology. Um, it just kind of reflecting back on in the last 15 years in the, and Hal, I apologize since Sherman and I both come from uh, the, the SharePoint side of things and to talk about SharePoint a little, but be, you know, but entering into space and it used to be all about keeping the servers up and running, you know, uh, and so, so much of the content, it was dev, was even, IT Pro was like 50, 60% of the content. You go to a SharePoint Saturday or other event, and so much of it was about that IT Pro perspective, a little bit of dev and tiny bit of end user. And now it's like 50, 60% end user, power user, um, low code, no code, uh, but really geared towards information workers and business users. Uh, and then IT Pro and, and Dev kind of equal chunks on that side. Um, and the conversation has moved from keeping the lights on to, hey, it's, we'll just assume the lights are on and here's what you now need to do with the technology to, uh, to, to innovate more quickly, to, to you know, improve efficiencies, to optimize your systems, all those kinds of things. And, uh, and so I really feel like we're at this, this place where we have the luxury of talking about productivity, <laughs> where before, you know, we, you know, productivity will be great once we make sure that we're, our, our backups are happening, that, you know, the servers are staying on. Yeah, certainly, certainly lower barriers to entry. I'm still finding in my experience, there's a lot of IT departments in, in organizations that um, still are thinking kind of the old school mentality, I'll, I'll call it. Um, not really kind of more as a reactive service as opposed to engaging with the business and figure out what the business problem is first and then trying to solve it with out of the box. Uh, Office 365, I'm also still dealing with a lot of um, kind of SharePoint specific type um, thinking where they're thinking, how do we do this in SharePoint? Um, as opposed to thinking beyond that saying, well, hey, if you have an E3 license, you have more than just SharePoint. So uh, maybe it's uh, using Planner. Maybe it's using, did you know you can, you don't have to put that MP4 file uh, in a document library or you use YouTube. There's something called Stream, right? So there's a lot of, still a lot of lack of knowledge about that. And it's about uh, educating the business about the services that are available. And a lot of IT organizations are just still too busy uh, for whatever reasons on, on various legacy systems that they don't aren't able to reach out to the business and fully understand what the business problem is. And then also bridge that by saying, okay, well, here's, here's what I know about office 365 and here's how to bridge that gap. Uh, Cause they're just too busy to, to learn some of that stuff. Um, so definitely what I'm trying to still, what I still find is uh, a lot of organizations, a lot of it departments don't, uh, yet fully embraced the role of a collaboration specialist. 
Yeah, and that's been a that's been a long long battle. It's been that way for a long time. Yeah, hundred percent. Topic two of you know understanding. I mean, that goes back to my you know project management days of uh, you know having arguments with engineers about designing something without fully understanding what we already had in place. Like, why are you going and starting to build something new? Like half of what you're talking about, we already have and, and we could modify or, um, or, well, you know, kind of as you point out is that usually with something like Microsoft 365 licensing, um, there's just so much under the hood. Think about it, you know, just individual workloads and you think of products like Excel and Word, where you have, I'll just you generically use the 80-20 rule of, you know, we, we do 80% of our activity on 20% of the features, and we have no idea about the other 80% of the, the features. We, we are, are, most people are just not, you know, getting down you know, that granular into those, those features and use, doing those special cases, and yet it can do so much. And, you know, most of the Microsoft products are like that. There's just so much under the hood. And so um, that's why it's, you, you, you should not build your requirements based on your understanding of what a product can and can't do, but have your requirements independently and then, then ask those questions and apply the, the technology uh, to know whether it can actually meet those requirements or not. But always start with the requirements. Yeah, and I think what's something that's like that concept is so basic and core f for someone like you and me. And I still, it still surprises me how um, it's not to a lot of others that are very tech focused. Um, their brain just automatically goes, I think, into solution mode. And how can I do that in OneDrive? How can I do that in Excel? How can I do that in, in OneNote? Whatever it is. And uh, yeah, I just, I, f I find that still kind of interesting. Like for me, it's never really about the technology. Like we're using Zoom, I have no issue with it. Um, had to get an update, but uh, you know, it's what works. Cause I can understand that in this scenario, teams won't work. Yeah. But it's, it's funny too, is I've, I've gotten some grief from people. It's like, and why are you using zoom? And, and uh, uh, so, well, the, this morning, so uh, one of my, uh, one of my uh, clients, partner companies, they did a, a webinar and, and tried using a different streaming technology. They're using it for the same, doing it essentially the same thing. They're using another third party tool. Of course, they're then, you know, we're showing is extranet user manager had their webinar and, and they did a great job. They're using, I think it's vMix and showing everything within teams and doing that. Audio wasn't fantastic in that, that mix. Um, and so, uh, you know, while I would love to use Teams for everything that I do, but as we all know, uh, for a webinar with external anonymous access to it and to stream, like it doesn't do those things. It's, that's not what it's built for. Uh, and so I, I run all of my webinars through, uh, through Zoom and it has the uh, simulcast you know, so I can stream it on Facebook or, or YouTube and, and records and then and all the pieces that are, are, that I need are there. There's some other automation. So use the tools that make sense that are the right fit. Don't, uh, well, you know, I always argue that there, I've not run into an organization in a long time that would say like, we are only a Microsoft shop period, or we're, we're only, uh, you know, well, you can't say that about Apple because it's hardware and the software's not there. Um, but we're, you know, any one technology stack. It used to be it was there were Microsoft and we're all Microsoft or we're all IBM or whatever it was. And they go use all those different things. Um, and they were just diehard on those things, even if, you know, a bunch of the core pieces were incredibly weak. Um, and... Anyway, you don't find companies that are like that now. Uh, and, and I would argue that that was never actually true when you kind of dig into the, you know, into the ranks and people would, they want to get work done. They want to use the right tools that are going to help them get their jobs done. And that's that whole shadow IT there. If the IT organization says you must use this tool and that tool is crap. Yeah, we know, but we are, you know, we will only use these tools end users will go around you. Yeah, that it's much harder to enforce that nowadays yeah. unless you unless you throttle the internet and have a gateway on it, right? Be a gatekeeper. Exactly. 
We've got a few more people that are watching. Again, if you have any questions you'd like us to address, you know, feel free to uh, ask away. We're we're here. We're just talking. We're chatting while uh, we're waiting for questions to come in. So we had a handful of questions in this morning's session. And for, again, if you're wondering what what we're doing here, this is just the Microsoft Community Office Hours and collection of people that are you know experts and MVPs and uh, and consultants that are very involved in the Microsoft Community, and we're we're going to try and do this uh, at two different times every Monday, just for the next few weeks. Uh, we'll we'll see how long this uh, this period of uh, you know, what would call it this self isolation yeah mini dark lockdown age. yeah <laughs> yeah uh, when when is your first session what I didn't see that this morning uh, it was at uh, eight a.m. Pacific oh all right. Yeah, it will be at 8 a.m. Pacific next week as well. So I'll have to I'll go back and look at the schedule, but I think we'll we'll push this one, this second session, um, back an hour. So it'll start at uh, at uh, five. So we uh, hopefully get a, a few more folks in the early time there. And uh, let's see. Uh, do any other comments there? Uh, just uh, looking at. Let me see if there's any any other questions that have come in. Uh, let's see. Yeah, just uh, looking through some of the questions uh, over the last. Uh, day or two out on the Office 365 community. And there's uh, right on the top, there's a couple of connectivity issues with, uh, as we were talking about with teams and the education sector. Um, let's see. Do, do, do. Oh, there's somebody's asking about whether Microsoft has gotten rid of the track changes for Office 365. And I, I, you know, I didn't go and dig into this. You know, that was news to me. Um, it looks like uh, Tracy Tracy Vanderskiff uh, responded that track changes still exist in Office Pro Plus. Um, yeah, I don't know if either of you know anything about that. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go dig into that because it, it, if it's changed, if it's gone away, I mean that's a that's a big thing. Last I checked, it was still there. Yeah, it was again news news to me. Um, so let's see other questions, uh, more activations. Yeah. So what else do the two of you guys have going on? Any webinars? You, you mentioned it just Sherman internal webinars tomorrow, like customer training stuff. Yeah, they um, had rolled out uh, internet based on SharePoint communication sites last late last spring, last summer. And so they just reached out to me again out of the blue super quickly and said, Hey, um, with this whole thing going on, a lot of people working remotely. One of our C-level people or Vivi Kung Ho about Teams. Can we, um, you know, do what we talked about last year? Can we? Can you whip that something up for like in a few days? Like, yeah, sure, we can do that. So all it is is uh, you know, a quick walk around with Microsoft Teams introduction. Um, you know, won't won't be diving too deep into anything. Probably won't get a chance to touch too much into the file sharing and you know SharePoint aspects of it. Mm -hmm. um, except with that one sales group, we probably will because they're already starting to use it. Uh, it'll be interesting. Again, I said uh, I, I don't know how it's going to go with uh, not talking about the Teams aspect and just talking about the chat. So I had to test this morning to see whether or not I could record. Uh, if it was a one-on-one -on -one chat, can I do a recording on that? And I think the answer is no. 
So I just, you know, make a note to scratch that. Don't talk about this on Wednesday. <laughs> Yeah, that's a uh, that's a key feature. In fact, somebody was just uh, I, where did I see this? I just highlighted that. Oh, I know what it was. Oh, uh, yeah. Sorry, that uh, something I can't talk about <laughs> that came out of last week's summit. I'm just like, oh yeah, this that topic just just came up. What was on? Oh yeah, so it's something I can't talk about. But, all right, so never mind. I was gonna bring something up and. Uh, about meetings, but I won't now. Uh, any other webinars or anything else? Do a little uh, promo. Do you have anything else coming up in the next uh, week or two, Sherman? No, I'm not that big time like uh, like the rest of you. No, big time. <laughs> Hal, how about yourself? you have any webinars or anything coming up? That I'm putting on? No, yeah. that I'm watching. There's that one that you're putting on tomorrow afternoon. Uh, I am going to be there for that. Let's say the, is that the security car? one? Is that the yeah. extra user manager security one? Yeah, I, actually, I won't well, be see. on for that one. I've got uh, because I'm a part of our. It's our monthly user group, so um, helping run that session, which we've transitioned. Uh, shockingly, we'll be doing it remotely. I know. Um, yeah, so we're we've moved all of that to Teams. Um, but yeah, that was a great session today. Uh, so fellow MVP Peter Carson, he was uh, it did a, a session today. I've got a link to it uh, on my Facebook page. And, of course, you can go to eum.co and find it. He's doing a webinar series on how to be successful working remotely. And, uh, and so kind of kick things off the first one, just talking about navigating around basic capability of, of teams. So, Sherman, you might want to go take a look at that. It's like 30 minutes long what he covered and get any ideas. Um, it's not stealing if, if uh, you know, you think good thoughts. So. <laughs> Is that a webinar that already happened or? Yeah, that just happened. To, that one happened today. So he's doing uh, 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 three in a row. So same time tomorrow and about, I think about 30 minutes again on security. Here, I'll, let me. You still let me, is Peter Carson? Yeah. So if you go to eum.co, Extranet user manager and ah. into the events, resources, events, and you'll see the details there. So yeah, that was the, uh, tomorrow is the, okay, it's a series. You click on the top one. So it was running your organization remotely, leveraging Teams and Office 365. That was today. So that recording is up there. Um, and so you can go and watch the on-demand recording. Tomorrow is cool. securing Office 365 and Teams. Uh, and then on Wednesday is extending Office 365 and Teams to your partners, which is, yeah, yeah it's an important topic um, for a lot of organizations that are, uh, you know, that, that whole extranet, you know, solution and, and uh, how you can leverage the tools that you have to uh, accomplish those, those goals. Anyway, so yeah, if you follow me on Facebook, you scroll down from this live session and you'll actually see the link to that recording or just go to eom.co. Yeah, I got it, All right. Uh, there we go. See. Yeah, I, so I've got, um, yeah, tomorrow, and I don't have it all up in here, so the, there's, uh, I think tomorrow's, uh, user group session here for Utah is an SPFX session. Um, and then, uh, you know, after that, uh, Tom Duff and I have our productivity tips webinar and I know I should, uh, share the link. So, And we we called it, uh, and I, I think I think I, I, Hal. I don't know if you've attended one of those, but we we try to come up with fun names for each one of them. And this month, we named the productivity tips very original. Um, I think I'm going to trademark it. We called it March Madness. So that makes a good deal of sense. Yeah, 
<laughs> uh, yeah. So let me see. And so there's the link to that. Um, and I'll share it within the chat here. What's a lot of fun about this, so uh, Tom and I have been doing those productivity tip webinars for uh, about three years now. Not quite every month. We're trying to make it every month. Uh, we've got like the next three or four months booked out, dates set for them. Um, but what's uh, fun about this, we, our format, we've got kind of the boxing match format or wrestling, whatever, either one works. We're in the, we've got the ring, and then we, we share 10 different productivity tips. Uh, they're not always new. We try to introduce some new uh, features and capabilities, but there are plenty of oldies, a bit goodies, but that we've just, we've never covered in these sessions. Um, and then Tom and myself, we both go and we try to blog about the things and expand each of those topics. And then we have people, so the, here's the thing, the other person has no idea what is the other is going to share. So we go head to head and it might, might be me sharing a tip on using OneNote and he might do SharePoint. And then we have the audience do a quick little vote and we take a poll. And uh, right now Tom is ahead in the polls. But uh, I'm still investigating. I, I, there's an asterisk that I've placed by that, those wins. Um, still investigating, you know, how he cheated. I don't know how or, or whether he did or not. Pretty sure he did. Um, now, but we do this and, uh, and share those out. So if you go out to, uh, again, out to my, my blog, you'll be able to see um, up at the top of my blog. So if you just go to buckleyplanet.com, um, you'll see up in the menu, the nav bar, it says productivity tips and, uh, click on that. And that will get you to all of our recordings, uh, the videos, the blog posts for each one of these, um, will actually point to each individual tip. And so, because, you know, we're, we're clearly, we're not going to share 10 productivity tips that everybody's interested in all 10 of those things. It might be only one, two, or three that you're, you know, really keen on investigating and potentially using. Um, so all the slides are available, but you can actually click on a link directly to that, uh, that tip that's being shared in the video and just watch those, you know, three to five minutes about that tip. So um, it, we, we try to have fun. You know, we, we kind of poke fun at each other throughout the hour. Um, but I, I mean, every single month, I learned something and Tom, I know has said the same thing. We both learned something, you know, we share some things that uh, neither of us have seen or we, you know, you, you hear about something and the months go by and you're like, Oh yeah, that I remember hearing about that, but I never took a look at it. So, um, you know, people seem to like it. We enjoy doing it. So that's happening tomorrow as well. That's at, uh, do, 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 I guess I could click on it and it'll tell you the time when that is nine Pacific nine Pacific. So yeah, right behind I was talking about actually. Yeah. It's happening right behind this. Oh, that's the one you're talking about. Yeah. That's, that's uh, that's always a lot of fun. So, um, uh, let's see any questions that come in. Let's see. Do, do, do. Phil's in there liking everything, but, but he, he doesn't have any questions or he's not joining to try and answer. Yeah, maybe, maybe we just have this, this session is at the, uh, we've got 13 minutes more of it at the wrong time for, for APAC. It's, a, it's a still a bit too early. We need to push it later in the evening to get bigger audience. Uh, that's all right. I knew going into this that it could be us sitting here in silence waiting for questions to come in, but it's kind of how office hours work. You know, it's, it, in fact, I, so I started uh, blogging about this, so I'm going to, I'll write about it, um, you know, tonight, but, uh, so back in my, my PM days, back in the mid nineties, um, working for the phone company in the San Francisco Bay area, um, of course we didn't have 
some of the great tools that we have now for, you know, so we certainly didn't have co-authoring and co-editing and, and um, when the uh, web meeting tools finally came out a few years later, were, were a bit pricey. Um, so one of the things that we used to do, uh, of course, we had our intranet and those resources, but we had our conference lines. So we were the phone company, so we had a lot of those conference lines. Uh, but one of the things that we would do is we would in our, uh, so I was in, you know, the, the, um, uh, the, the IT team, we were, I, I worked for Pacific Telesis Shared Services Organization. So we were kind of a shared services IT team for multiple business units around uh, Pacific Bell. Um, and uh, we just leave a, a, a phone line open 24 hours a day, sometimes multiple days if a project was going on. Uh, and that was, it was pretty expensive to do that. Um, however, uh, you know, the, we had sometimes, especially when uh, data center projects were coming online or we were doing a massive migration or an upgrade, uh, there might be people there around the clock um, working from the support desk. And so having that phone line on, um, and so that anytime you could like jump on and you'd hear in the background people typing away or a, a conversation and you'd literally just kind of shout in the phone like, Hey, Hey, who's, who's there online. And then, and then have a discussion around that. But um, it's, it's great now to have the, the synchronous, the real time collaboration as well as the asynchronous uh, capability so that um, you're able to kind of follow along on stuff. So. That was another, in all this downtime and quiet time and my time out walking the dogs in the beautiful nature, they, you know, longer walks than I was doing uh, a month ago. With all that going on, I'm, I've been thinking about some of these things like, yeah, remember how we used to do that? That was, uh, we're really blessed now with some of the capabilities that we have. Uh, anyway. I'll pause from talking. If you can tell, my voice is going a little bit anyway, so. Uh, that's not, that's not a, uh, something that happens with uh, coronavirus, is it? <laughs> the voice disappears. Uh, all right. Yeah, I don't think so. I think there's <clears throat> more to it. Yeah, I think so too. But I found that... Uh, so on the weekend, I woke up, just normal wake up and kind of had the sniffles. I'm like, oh no, what is that? <laughs> Quickly look up the symptoms. Do I have a headache? Do I have a fever? It's crazy. It's just getting this all messed up. Yeah. Well, I've had, I've, it, it's, it's sad. So I had, uh, you know, in majority of my life living in California, I had allergies my entire life. Moved to Seattle and lived there for uh, 12 years. And it's like my allergies almost completely, I'd say 95% just disappeared. In that I'm surprised by that though, right? Because I think it's pretty potent up here. I know, I'm, I'm just telling you, whatever, whatever they have in Seattle, I was not <laughs> allergic to. Um, we moved to Utah three years ago. My, my allergies all came back with, uh, uh, you know, in, in an angry wave. And uh, so I, anyway, so I'm, I'm, I'm on some new, uh, you know, uh, uh, just antihistamine stuff and it uh, dries out my throat. So of course I have like just the <coughs> dry cough thing. And every time I cough, my wife is just like, I'm like, no, I, I don't have that. Like, not that I know of. Well, that's the thing. How do we know? Right. Yeah, and of course that's the thing. I'm unfortunately in the 70-ish category with, uh, you can tell from the that. <clears throat> and uh, I have a couple of problems uh, along the line, so that's, it's a scary, scary time. Yeah. Well, stay stay safe, Hal. Like, don't don't interact with people. <laughs> don't, don't touch anything. Well, don't don't touch your face. Touch anything. Certainly, don't touch people. Yeah. Well, for the 
uh, oh, from my background, you can't see that. What I did is like I've got a good old fashioned paint stirring handle, and I, I keep that here. And if I need to scratch something, <laughs> we do it that way. That's you know, and I can spray this puppy idea. with alcohol and stuff. And yep. I, the same thing would apply if you've got a bamboo back scratcher around. Those work real good too. I need one of those. That's a great idea. That should be on your. Uh... See, that's what we need. We we have all of these. Um, tips for working from home. It's all about technology. We need to have the low to no tech tips for working from home uh, with things like that, like uh, like legitimate little, like having a, a back scratcher. Of course, now to get one, I have to order it off of Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> dollar store. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah. Order from Amazon because you don't want to go into the dollar store because the dollar store is full of people. Yeah. So, fortunately, I had one, and the, and the paint panel was 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 courtesy of the local Home Depot a year ago. So, I just happened to find it and say, "Yeah, that'll work." Well, we kind of shared this morning how you know kind of our our tips for working from home. So, I think the challenge for you and I is let's why don't we close this thing out in the, the next five minutes, but. You know, any, like what are your, like, you know, something different, some other tips. Like I, I shared this morning about getting up like every hour and doing something. So getting up and forcing yourself to move around. Um, so I'll think of something different too. So Sherman, you didn't go this morning. So, you know, what are your kind of tips or best practices for work from home? God, I don't know if I have one. I just, my routine is, uh, I'm just think I'm just grateful for that, uh, coffee machine. Um, yeah, I don't, I definitely can att attest to, you know, changing your clothes and that you can see, I don't shave every day, uh, anymore because working from home, not always on screen or anything like that. Then I need to do a better job of forcing myself to just even go around the block and just walk around the block or the nearby park just to get out of here and, Otherwise, like it happened today is like I look at the clock and it's two o'clock and I realize I hadn't eaten yet. So it's just one of those busy times right now. But uh, yeah, definitely take time to step away from the computer. That's for sure. Yeah. Hal, anything that you would uh, say differently from this morning? Sure. Uh, no, that that's that's pretty much it. Um, I yeah, just, you know, keep your distance. That's that, <laughs> as for me. Unfortunately, I, I pretty much look at. At, at, at someone who, at other people as, you've got a loaded gun pointed at my head. I'm, I'm going to stand away from you. You know, it just, and maybe that's the long, long way to look at it. And you know, I, I will have to be the first one to admit that I've, you know, I am as, as much fighting the hysteria as anyone. But at the same time, um, I want to, I, I would like to see the next year's summit. You know, I, I want to be a, around to be another MVP for next year and, and, and the, the pick up on the Seattle trip that I didn't get to go to this year. Uh, and, and truthfully, I got to admit, uh, just out of the, the way they were able to turn that around and put on that, that virtual summit, regardless of its, of its shortcomings and, and, and the, the problems that, that, that were inherent with it, that was a monumental effort. And I really do have to thank them for the kind of hard work that they put, make, put in to make that happen. You know, it was, I don't know how you can turn an event around like that quickly, but they did it. And, and I, I am. Yeah, I am it was it. pretty amazing for those that, uh, what Hal's talking about, for those that aren't MVPs and weren't able to participate uh, last week. Um, and the MVP summit is they, they ran the entire thing on teams and it, yeah, I mean, look at they're they're like we do with anything online, you're going to have some people that have connectivity issues and different things. But I, I think after, I mean, I, I heard about a couple minor things on days two and three and four, but it went pretty well. Um, there, so my, my understanding is that their Microsoft is going to kind of write up like what they did and share that out for other organizations that would like to run, you know, an internal event or potentially something like, like this with so many external, you know, partners with MVPs from around the world. Um, this yeah, is, I mean, that's almost a Nobel Peace Prize effort. <laughs> this is, they need to do, I, Microsoft has been good the last few years about doing the, you know, here's how we did it. Um, and sharing that out. I know CSEO, which is now the the rebranded, 
you know, the old IT, my MSI IT organization, they've done a pretty good job at, um, uh, at, at kind of capturing what they did. And that's, you know, Caruana did that for years. Uh, Pune um, owns that now, if you know Pune and her team. Um, and, and really kind of sharing like, hey, here's how we did this. Um, here's what we learned from that. Here's what we would do differently. And so I'm looking forward to reading up on uh, the write-up of what they did. Um, you know, partly post-mortem for that, uh, you know, activity. And, and the other half is that, uh, like, there's, there's no reason why any other organization can't go and, and, uh, and do something similar. So, yeah, should be great. Um, all right. Well, with that, I'm just looking to make sure if there's anything else uh, on there. It doesn't look like any questions have, have come in. So, um, you know, Sherman and Hal, you know, thanks a lot for your time here. And uh, we'll do this again next week. So we will be um, – I'll confirm for the afternoon for this session. It might be an hour later, um, but definitely at, at 8 a.m. Pacific next Monday, and we'll be on. So – uh, if you're watching the recording, if you'd like to join us and be part and ask questions, and we should have a, a handful more of MVPs. Of course, Sherman, Hal, you guys are both welcome back. Um, I think we can have up to like 100 people in here. I think it's, it's a pretty high number. We'll not get anywhere close to that. So, um, But uh, you know, feel free to, to jump in. And there's Sean right at the end, just as we're shutting it down. Thank you, Sean, for nothing. For absolutely nothing. <laughs> yeah, you got the hour wrong. Yeah, it's all right. Hey, next week, you will, will have joined right at the right time because we're going to push it back an hour. Yeah, so it's all right. And, and we don't hear you anyway. So, yeah. All right. Thank you, Sean, for so much, for all that you've done. Again, I say with as much sarcasm as possible. My work here is done. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, George Costanza. All right. All right. Hey, thanks a lot, guys, and we'll uh, we'll see you online. Uh, uh, you know, uh, through other activities, but uh, next week. See you Monday. All right. Bye. Take it easy. <laughs> <laughs>